Are you looking for an awesome motorhome with twin beds so you don't get that elbow in the middle of the night or get woken up when your partner has to use the bathroom? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome motorhomes with twin beds. Hey everybody, Mike with RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to check out our website too at rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles there as well. But today we're going to be taking a look at awesome motorhomes that have twin beds. We found some awesome models. Stick around, you're definitely going to want to check these out. This Class C RV is the Jayco Melbourne model number 24T. It measures in at 25 feet, 2 inches long, has a tow capacity of 5,000 pounds, and it can sleep up to four people. When you first walk into this Class C RV, on the right hand side is the driver's cab and over cab. And then we wrap on around through the living and dining area, kitchen area, bathroom to my left, and the bedroom is straight behind me. Now our first impression when we walk into this Class C RV is that it's very, very nimble and very, very efficient. Everything is fitting in here just right. Now on my right hand side is where the driver's cab is located. You've got nice comfy seats here that both swivel around. This is built on a Mercedes chassis, by the way. And then up top here in the over cab area, we've got the mesh in place. So if somebody's sleeping up top, like your kids or grandkids, they don't roll out of bed at night. Now the size of this bed though is pretty good. Let's check and see. We have about 48 inches wide and 90 inches wide. So, you know, that's the full width of the RV up there. And that's how a lot of Class C's are up above the over cab. So you get plenty of room up here. You'll also notice on the right hand, right hand side here that you have a TV up here. And this will actually swing out off the wall and then you can see it better from your couch area. But if somebody's sleeping up here, it's really in the perfect spot. There's also some cubbies up towards the front of the over cab where there is some uh, cargo netting to hold things in place up there. So here I am sitting on the couch in here, which serves as both your comfy couch in your living area and also your dinette. Now the couch here is pretty comfy, but it does not jackknife into a bed and it doesn't recline. It's just a sofa. Um, but the sofa does have some storage underneath. And so, you know, anytime you have storage under your sofa, you're usually going to have to sacrifice the recliner mode of the sofa itself. Now, there are also a couple of side tables and this is a brand new RV. They're still packed away. I don't want to go rooting through the box and unpack them and all that stuff. But each of the side tables just fit into these cup holders and they swing right around. So you can sit here with like a, you know, a TV tray kind of feel or a side table feel. Now, if you don't want to use the side tables, you could always get a standalone table and put it in here and then eat your meal on your table. And the nice thing about a standalone table is you can take it outside and use it there as well. Some other nice features about this area though are got a couple windows behind us here where we've opened them up to get a little cross breeze in here. There are a couple of lights up overhead. And then you also have these couple of cabinets for additional storage space. One last thing to point out is that there is an outlet near the one side of this couch. So you can plug in your computer if you need to while you're sitting here doing some trip planning. So in this Class C, like so many Class C's, there's a cabinet over top of your entry door. This is a great spot to store like flashlights or bug spray or stuff like that that you need outside. Uh, and it's very accessible right here in this cabinet. Now, as we move through the kitchen area, we have what's called an inline kitchen here. And that just means that all your major kitchen appliances are in one line. It's a very efficient kitchen setup. Starting from the top here, we have these two cabinets where there's just a ton of storage up top. And then you have this gigantic microwave oven. I mean, this is absolutely a residential sized microwave oven in here. And it's also a convection oven too, which is great because it gives you the ability to, you know, to bake things if you want to. We have a convection oven in our class A RV and it's great. We throw pizzas in there all the time. It took me a little while to figure out how it works, but now that we got it, it works great. Uh, also next to that, we have this nice big round single bowl sink with a nice big gooseneck faucet and a sprayer. And then of course we have a two burner stove here where you know the lid lifts up 
or you can put it down to create some extra countertop space. Now, behind that, we have this nice looking backsplash here to kind of protect the walls in case you have any splatter while you're cooking. Now, I'm not a real big fan of this setup. I personally think they should have taken this two burner stove gotten a little smaller one, turned it sideways, and that way it would give you some more countertop space in here. Like there's nowhere really to put a coffee pot, a toaster, air fryer, crock pot. You're really very limited with your space. Although they consider this glass top extra space, if you're cooking, it's not. So uh, anyway, well, you know, that's the way it is and that's how it goes. There's also an electrical outlet on the side over here but nothing in the actual cooking area. So even if you did manage to squeeze in a coffee pot or a crock pot or something up here, you'd have to kind of snake your, your cord over to this outlet and it may not be long enough to reach, especially on a coffee pot. So below the sink and the cooktop, we have plenty of storage here underneath of the sink area. And then we've got a couple of drawers underneath of the cooktop for all of your kitchen utensils. So just past the microwave convection oven and the cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. This is a very good size Furion refrigerator. I can't figure out which side of the door to stand on, but it's got a separate freezer from the refrigerator. Very nice size. It is a 12 volt unit, which that's pretty much what we're seeing in all the RVs these days. The old propane ones are probably a, a thing of the past at this point. And just past the refrigerator, there's this really cool little cabinet here nice little pantry cabinet you can put your spices in there maybe some canned goods and store them while you're driving on down the road so here i am in the very back of this class c rv and this is where the bedroom is located and this has a very unique bedroom setup currently they're showing it as set up like twin beds back here and if you leave it set up this way uh, each bed would be oh 72 inches by 32 inches wide you know, and if I'm laying on here, you know, you can tell I could fit pretty well. I'd be pretty comfortable. Um, the other option is just to go ahead and make it into one big bed back here. And the way you do that is pretty easy. You just move this cushion out of the way. And then you grab this wooden part back here and just pull it forward. And then climb up and reposition your pillows. And then you end up with one big giant bed back here. Now, it's a little bit... You know, like you got to climb up here to do it. But once you do, you know, you end up with this massive bed back here. Now we already know it's 72 inches one way, but the other way you would end up with, I bet it's close to 90. Oh, what do you know? 90 inches wide. So now that we converted the beds back to the twin bed setup, uh, there's a nice drawer underneath of this one bed. It's really big. I mean, it pulls out nice and far. So you can store a lot of stuff in there. There's also a receptacle down here. So if you do leave it as twin beds, you know, you can plug things in here. You could even put a CPAP machine here. You could plug in your phone, your computer, your tablet, what have you. Uh, up top, you'll notice that there's cabinetry all the way around. So you have a ton of, of clothes storage in here. But I really like the corner shelves on each side of this bedroom there's a nice shelf up top with a receptacle and a couple of usb ports so just very convenient and out of the way while you're sleeping so i really think that's a great idea there's a couple of other things to note back here in the bedroom one is the tv location and this is a great spot for your tv you can put a good size tv in here first of all you've got your electrical receptacle your cable cable rough in there's even usbs up here if you need them but you can put a TV here and lay in bed and watch TV before you go to sleep at night. And then there's a wardrobe closet right across from here. And inside the wardrobe closet, there's a bar up top for all your hanging garments. This is another great storage space. So here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower stall like I always end up doing. And let's go ahead and check out the headspace inside of the shower stall. Now, for those of you that don't know, in all, just about every RV, the shower base is lifted up off the floor. This one's, you know, got about a 10 inch step up to get into it. And they do that to make the trap underneath the shower drain work. So what they do is they'll raise the floor of the shower and then they put a skylight over top of the shower to give you some extra headroom in here. And the headspace inside the shower 
is, gosh, six feet, 10 inches. The headroom in the entire RV, just on the normal ceiling, is six feet, 11 inches. So for you taller folks, this is a really, really fantastic option for you. And you could probably sleep in the bed, you know, east to west instead of north to south if you're really, really tall because you have 90 inches of width to be able to sleep. So that would probably work out really well too. Now within the shower, it's in a really different design. I think it was custom made just for this bathroom, but it's wider in the back and skinnier towards the front. There is a little spot here for your soap and shampoo, but it's also got a retractable shower door in here. So you can close this up and then it retracts back out of the way. Now we've talked to some people that have this type of shower door and they recommend that after a shower, you leave it in the closed position so it will dry before you close it back up and you know trap that moisture inside of your screen. Outside of the shower, there's a medicine cabinet right across with one built-in shelf. And then below that, we have a very compact vanity design with a small sink and, uh, and a faucet. And then of course you've got an outlet here as well. So if you have a blow dryer, hair curler, or whatever you need, you can plug right in. And then here I am sitting on the commode and even with the door closed in here, it doesn't feel claustrophobic at all. The elbow test actually works really, really well in this bathroom. So here we are outside and for storage, you've got this one storage compartment here, which is a decent sized storage compartment. But then in the very back, you've got this pass through storage area that's accessible from three different sides. This motorhome is the Thor Vegas model number 24.1. It measures in at just 25 feet, eight inches long, has a tow capacity of 6,000 pounds, and it can sleep up to five people. When you first walk into this Class A RV, on the right-hand side is where the driver's cab and over cab are located. We then wrap on around through the living and kitchen area. Here in the mid coach is where the bathroom is located and behind me is the bedroom. Now our first impression upon walking in here is that this feels really nice and spacious towards the front end of the coach. With the mid bath in here though, it kind of creates a little bit of a barrier to the back end of the coach, but what it also does is it creates some privacy in the bedroom area. A lot of uh, Class A motorhomes have the bathroom all the way in the back, and that way the whole entire coach feels much larger. But with the mid bath here, it does create some nice privacy in the back. So here we are at the driver's cab area, and as you can see, we have some nice, big, comfy captain's chairs here. Both seats do swivel around so they'll face into the rig. So if you have some friends, family or over or anyone like that, they can swivel on around and be comfortable while they're seated here. Now this is on a Ford chassis, which is a gas motor. And uh, we have a gas motor in our Class A motorhome. We just took it through the Rockies over the summer and man, our motor powered us over those mountains, no problem at all. This also has a really nice big windshield no impediment to the view at all, which is, again is one of the best features in a Class A motorhome to enjoy. Now the driver's side, very simple setup. Everything is very reachable and convenient. And on the passenger side here, we have this little desk in place. This just folds right out. You can sit here and work while you're cruising down the road. Susan's sitting here editing video and stuff while we're bouncing down the road sometimes. <laughs> You have some USB ports and a receptacle that are available for you as well. So a couple more things to mention about the driver's cab area. First of all, there is an over cab bunk bed that will come on down with some electronic controls. There's no power in this unit right now. We're at an RV show, so I can't lower it down and show you that. But the measurement on it uh, is going to be approximately 78 inches. And this one looks to be about, I would say 38 inches wide or so. So one person could sleep up in this bunk pretty easily. Uh, one other thing to note, even when the bunk is all the way in the up position, there is a step up into the driver's cab area. So I've already come up here a couple times and hit my head on the ceiling. So it's just something to keep in mind. You would have to kind of stay crouched up in this area while you're entering and, uh, and exiting the driver's cab area. So here I am sitting on this nice comfy couch right behind the driver's seat. And this couch is in a great position in here and it serves a few uses. It's not just a couch, but the positioning of it is very nice. It's right across from the TV, which is mounted over top of the entry door. So you have a nice view of it. Also, you'd have a view of it if you were in the overhead bunk 
going to sleep at night, you can watch the TV as you drift off to sleep up there. Now the sofa itself has a cup holder on one side. It's got a, a USB charge port on the other side. And then there is a receptacle on the wall on my right hand side. So if you're sitting here and you need to charge any electronic devices or anything, you can certainly do that. Now your couch in here also serves as your dinette. And there is a freestanding table. Well, no, it's not a freestanding, but it's a pole mounted table that would go across here. So when you're sitting here, you can enjoy your dinner whatever, or whatever while you're watching TV. Boy, I am not with it this morning, am I? Come on, it's the first tour, Mike. Let's get going here. Um, anyway, so you have that option. That's the two functions that this couch serves. The third function is that it is also a bed. And the way you would get this to, to sort of work is you remove your pillows like this. I'll just throw them up here. And then this just pulls on out. It's not really a jackknife, it's more like a sofa bed. And you just put these little legs down. And then there you go. And then this back cushion <clears throat> folds on down into place. And that is where the, uh, <laughs> the dinette tabletop stows away also. It's a little bit of an inconvenient location because I guess you have to pull the bed out to get to the table. I would probably try to find a different place to stow it somewhere in here. But anyway, let's check out the size of this bed. And this thing's going to measure in at about 70 inches long by 56 inches wide. So almost a short queen bed in here. Not a bad size bed. Two adults or certainly two kids would be able to sleep on this couch very easily. Now just above where the couch is located, we have this nice large window overhead to let in a lot of natural light. There's a couple of lights under here. There's also a receptacle on each side of the underside of these cabinets. And then these doors lift up. They do stay in place, which is a great feature. So you can access all of your gear up in those cabinets. Now across from the couch is where the kitchen area is located and as I mentioned uh, just a couple seconds ago the TV is mounted just above the entry door in here. Then as we work our way across I really like the cabinetry in here. It's a very nice cabinet. It looks very well built and behind here we have you know lots of storage space. They do have a um, shelf in here and these are fully adjustable shelves which is really just a terrific thing to do. That way you can make everything fit just the way you want it to. Down below that, there is a light underneath of here to light up your countertop area. There's also one over here to light up your cooktop. Nice window over top of the countertop is always a great feature. And then of course, we have a nice big single bowl round sink in here with a gooseneck faucet and a sprayer that pulls out. So that's a nice feature. And then they have a two burner cooktop here. Sorry, Rachel Ray, I'm gonna block you. And uh, the only thing I would change about this, and you guys have probably heard me say this in other videos, I wish these burners were front to back. And that way they would take up less space widthwise, and that would give you more countertop space in here. That way, if you wanna hook up a coffee pot or a toaster or something like that, you can certainly do that. Now, there is some extra countertop space. It's on the other side of the sink here, and you can raise that up, put your coffee pot or toaster there, and there's even a receptacle on the side so you can plug in. Now, just below the cooktop is where the convection microwave is, and then we've got a nice big drawer underneath for pots and pans, a bank of three drawers here for all your kitchen utensils, and then a little extra storage or a trash can cabinet under the sink. So just past the cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. And it's a little bit tight in this hallway when you open the fridge, but you can do it. And the doors do swing all the way open so you can have full access to your refrigerator and your separate freezer above. So just past the mid bath is where the bedroom is located back here. And it's nice and private back here because, you know, it's kind of separated from the rest of the coach. Now this is a big bedroom and it's almost all mattress or it's also twin beds back here. The way you see it right now is the twin bed set up. Uh, let's see how big these beds are. We're talking about uh, 74 inches by 38 inches wide. So decent size, but if you're a taller person, that might be a little bit of a, a squeeze for you to sleep in here comfortably. Uh, your other option is to use this extra pillow, place it in this 
part right here where my legs are and you can turn this into one gigantic bed if you did that we know it would be 74 inches and it's as wide as the whole coach so you got 90 inches wide so think about this if you're taller and you don't want to sleep you know north to south you could sleep east to west and then you have 90 inches of space from head to toe and you've got 74 inches wide so this makes an ultra big king sized bed back here if you'd rather go that route. Now, up above here, you'll notice that there is storage cabinets around the whole perimeter of the room. Each of the cabinets have lights under them, and the two side cabinets have an electrical receptacle under them. So if you need to plug in any electronics while you're, you know, reading a book or reading your Kindle or charging your phone overnight, you can certainly do those things. There's also three windows back here. Now, two of them will open, the ones on the sides. The rear window will not, but you can still get a nice cross breeze through here as well. The TV is mounted on the wall behind the bathroom. Great spot while you lay in here and drift off to sleep at night. And then just to my right here, there's a little uh, couple of USB ports and a couple of built-in shelves to hold things like your Kindle or iPhone while you're charging them up. Now, as you can see right here, this is set up as the twin bed option. And this little piece is really kind of cool, right? It's, it's kind of your, you know, you're sitting in here, you can have a glass of wine and relax, but it's nice to have a couple of cup holders built in. If you were gonna convert this into a king bed, you would just take this cushion and flip it over and it's nice and soft on the other side. And that way it becomes a part of your bed. And I also wanna mention there are a couple of drawers underneath of here for some additional storage. Now, one last thing to mention about the bedroom is you also have a nice mirrored wardrobe uh, cabinet here. And uh, there's a bar up top that you can hang all of your garments. There's also a table and uh, in this closet that stows in here. And this table is used, I forgot to mention it earlier, but it goes in between the two captain's chairs up front. So when you do turn them around into the rig, you can have a table in between those two chairs. Now, just below your wardrobe cabinet, you have two full extension drawers that pull out for even more storage. Now, here we are back at the mid coach and we're going to take a look at the bathroom. But I wanted to start on the outside because this has an unusual door system set up in it. First of all, both of these doors open out and what they do is they sort of cut off the hallway and the living area and they can also cut off the bedroom area so you can have more privacy inside your bathroom. So there's a little magnetic catch up top so the door doesn't bang into the fridge. I'll just show you real quick. And then the back door just opens all the way up. And that can be used to cut off access into the bedroom or create privacy, I should say. There's also a full length mirror here. So, you know, if you wanna check yourself out in the morning before you're ready to go for the day, you can do that as well. So here we are in the bathroom area and with those doors opened up like we just showed you, it actually feels pretty big in here. Now here I am standing in the shower as I usually do. And this is a corner style shower with a curtain that pulls around. And if you've seen any of our other videos, you know I don't like this style, this setup. The shower stall is a little bit small in my opinion and with the shower curtain wrapped around you, I know it would be stuck to me the entire time I took a shower. So I wish they had a little bigger shower base in here and then maybe some type of a glass door design so it's a little more convenient, but it is what it is. On my right hand side here, there are three shelves for soap or shampoo bottles or potpourri. Uh, nothing like having a fresh smelling shower. And then you have your wand here. Now let's check our ceiling height in here as well while I'm standing here. Let's see what we have. Total height wise it, to the top of the skylight is six feet, nine inches. The headroom just in the normal floor to ceiling throughout the entire coach is six feet, 10 inches. So a lot of ceiling height in here for you taller folks. This might be a, a good choice for you if you're looking for a smaller motorhome. Now, just outside of the shower is a really skinny little medicine cabinet here, but it's got three shelves built into it. Provides you a little uh, space to put your toiletries away. And then just outside the shower is where the vanity is located. Uh, and then just above that, you do have an electrical outlet in case you want to plug in a curling iron or hair dryer or whatever you need. And then finally, there's a little bit of storage underneath of the sink. Now, just above where the toilet is located, you've got a little bit more storage here. You can store some 
you know, towels or extra TP or toilet chemical or whatever in there. And then finally, here I am sitting on the commode, not going to pass the elbow test on that side, but on my right hand side, plenty of room. So here we are outside of this coach and just outside of the entry door, there's a small storage compartment down below. But in the very back of this rig, they have this large pass through storage area that's accessible from all three sides, which is fantastic. They used to build them so it was just accessible on one side or the other. And then anything you stored in the middle, it was really hard to get to. But with this back access door, it makes it much more convenient. I also want to point out that all of the storage compartments are lighted as well. This motorhome is the Jayco Granite Ridge model number 22T. It measures in at just 22 feet 11 inches long. We don't know the tow capacity yet because it's not listed on their website and it can sleep up to two people. When you first walk into this RV on the right hand side is the driver's cab area. Next we wrap on around to the dinette and kitchen area. Then there's a mid bath and finally the bedroom is all the way in the back. Now my first impression uh, walking into this RV is that it's very compact and it's small so it's going to be easy to drive and go anywhere you want to go. In fact, this particular model has all wheel drive. It sits on a Ford Transit 350 HD chassis so it'll get you where you want to go and that all wheel drive is a really nice feature to have because these, these types of RVs are made to go where you want to go and get off the beaten trail. A little bit now up top here we've got some storage on each side of the over cab area and then you've got a nice big tv up here as well so if you're sitting here relaxing in your dinette area you can watch tv and totally chill out the driver's cab area is very well appointed i like the way everything looks it's got a nice big touch screen in the middle so you can use your gps use your radio and all your controls for your rv it's a really nice setup over top here, you've also got some cubbies where you can throw maps and pens and all that kind of stuff up top for your travels. So here I am sitting at the dinette in here. And honestly, if Susan and I were in here, we would be bumping knees under this table like crazy. Now, ordinarily, I would really enjoy that. But around the 50th time, I think I get pretty sick of it. How about you, honey? Yes. Yes, for sure. But, you know, we could squeeze in here and make it work for a small RV that you can go anywhere with. I mean, that's that's one of the things you have to put up with is a little bit smaller dinette area. Now, above the dinette, you have this nice window that will open. They have the really nice shades in here where you can pull your screen up or you can pull your shade down. I mean, these are fantastic window options that work really, really well. And then above that, you have a couple of lights and then you have some nice storage inside of these compartments overhead. Now, one other thing that we really look for somewhere near our dinette is, is there a electrical outlet and USB ports? And in this case, they have both and they're located right under the dinette by my left leg. Uh, so if you're sitting here at your table and you're working or, you know, maybe doing some trip planning, you can plug in your computer if you need to and you are good to go. Now the kitchen area in here is very nice and compact as well. It's an inline kitchen, which just means that everything, all the kitchen appliances are just in a line. Now up top here, we'll start here. You've got a nice cabinet here that flips up so you can get into all this storage space here. And right next to that, you've got a convection microwave oven overhead. And the cabinets are really high up off the countertop in here too, which, which is nice because it makes this area feel bigger, which is a good thing. Now your countertop area in here is pretty big and here's a receptacle in the corner. So you could plug in a, you know, a toaster or a coffee pot or whatever you need in the morning. Now there is no cooktop in here, but it does come with an induction cooktop. Now we're at an RV show, so they have it hidden away somewhere or they didn't put it in the RV for the show because you can literally grab it and walk away with it. And they do plug in. The cool thing about those induction cooktops is you can use it inside or you can take it outside and plug it in out there and use your counter, your cooktop out there as well. So it's a little bit versatile in where you can use it. But they do have this really nice round single bowl deep sink in here. It's got a big gooseneck faucet and a sprayer that you can use as well. And then they just have this really nice wooden, uh, you know, sink cover. I suppose you could use this as a cutting board. Um, and that just gives you extra countertop space when you're not using your sink as well. Now down below here, we have plenty of storage underneath the kitchen sink. And then there are also three drawers off to the side where you can store all of your kitchen utensils. Right across from the kitchen is another pantry cabinet. So you have lots of storage down there too. 
Now, just beyond the, the kitchen and microwave and all that stuff is where the refrigerator is located. Now, this is the skinniest refrigerator I've ever seen in an RV before. But hey, you're in an RV that's less than 23 feet long. So things are going to be a little more compact in here. That's just how it is. Down below here, you have plenty of room for all your cold storage. And then there's a separate freezer area up top. So here I am all the way in the back of this RV. And as you can see, it's a couple steps up to get into the bed area. And in just a few minutes, we're gonna show you why it's designed this way. And I bet you're gonna think it's really, really cool, because I sure do. Now back here in the bedroom, you can set this up as twin beds, which is how it's set up right now. And if you were to do that, let's see how, how big these beds would be. Let's see here. All right, we got 76 inches by, and we'll call it 29 inches, 30 inches on each side. So if you wanted to leave it in the twin bed setup, then this is what you would have. And then you could also just convert this into one big bed back here because this cushion has a hard bottom on it and it just fits in the middle here. And there you go, I didn't really do that right. I don't, there we go, now it's popping in. So if we did that, you would end up with a huge bed in here. And the width of this, it's probably, eh, it's about 81, 82 inches in here. So, you know, that's a pretty good size bed. And you guys know I'm 5'11", so, you know, here's what it would look like if I was sleeping in here. Now, if I got up really fast, bam, I might hit my head. So you gotta watch out for stuff like that. But uh, over top here, we've got all these cabinets here. And in this particular model, um, they are showing the optional Starlink that come, can come with it, but it is an option that you would have to pay for as an upgrade. But since this is an, you know, kind of meant to be like an off-road vehicle to go to the middle of nowhere and hang out, you're gonna need Starlink for internet probably. And so they already have the router mounted back here. And then uh, the dish that you would use, um, is a separate dish that connects to a long cord and you can set the dish up on the ground or you can get a pole mount on your ladder and set it up that way. There's a few different ways to do it, but you know, what a great setup for an off-road vehicle. Now, in addition to that, there are receptacles and USB ports under here that you can access and then you can plug in your phone at night or whatever and you pop it up in this little handy shelf to charge overnight for you. Another really great feature in this bedroom is the two really large windows on each side. And there's another window on the back. So you can open all these babies up. They have these really nice screens and then you can open them, lower them. You can put your shades down, but man, you get a really nice cross breeze through here and we are enjoying it because it is hot outside today. Let me tell you what. Now the TV location back here is right on this wall. You can see you've got a receptacle and cable outlet right here. You can hang your TV here, lay in bed at night and drift right off to sleep. Down below these beds, there's also more storage. There's a couple of, there's one cabinet door, but there's also four drawers back here that open. They're nice and big and deep for all your storage needs. So let's head on into the bathroom and check that out. But before we do, I just wanted to show you this, your door is on a little magnet catch. So when it's in that position, the magnet catches it and it creates a little separation between the bedroom and the rest of the RV. Now, now that I'm inside the shower, when you want to take a shower, you don't just close the door, you actually use the retractable shower door. And there you go. Stand in here and take a shower and keep the water from going out there. Uh, I love the retractable shower doors. They're, they're out of the way. They're easy to use. They're just terrific. Now, once you're in the shower, you know, it's a, it's what's called a wet bath. Now, for those of you that don't know what a wet bath is, a wet bath just means that the shower floor with a drain in it is the floor for the whole entire bathroom. Your toilet sits in the shower with you. And so when you take a shower, everything in here gets wet. Therefore, it's called a wet bath. A dry bath is like your bathroom at home where your shower is your shower and then your toilet's outside of the shower and your vanity's outside of the shower. In this case, everything's inside the shower, so it's called a wet bath. Now, a wet bath, some people don't like them because everything gets wet, you gotta dry everything off after you take a shower, but some folks really think they're great because the toilet's in here, and so if you need to sit down while you're taking a shower for some reason, maybe you got a bad knee or something like that, you know, you can sit down on the toilet, take a shower, 
and there you go. You got a seat inside here for you. Now this one, this wet bath is actually larger than most of them that we see. There's plenty of room in here. I can move around very comfortably. I'd be able to take a shower in here, no problem. We have some corner shelves here for your soap and your shampoo. There's even a little window in here to get some extra light. You hardly ever see that these days. So you also have a vent fan up top. You could open this window for some ventilation and really lower the humidity that could build up in your RV when you take a shower. Now, there is a vanity sink in here, but it's a very unusual vanity sink. You have to kind of lower it down. It's like an airplane kind of vanity, and then you can pull your faucet out and wash your hands or whatever. And then this does fill with water, but when you close, when you close the sink, the water pours out and drains on out that way. So it's a really cool little setup. And finally, when you're sitting on the commode in here, which by the way is a cassette toilet, it's not your standard type toilet that you find in many other Class C RVs. Uh, you have a decent amount of elbow room. I mean, I'm not going to pass the elbow test, but you've got some decent room in here. So. Let's head on outside now and take a look at why the back bed is so high. I know you're going to love this feature. So here we are outside the RV and this storage area is why the bed is raised so high inside because look at this massive storage area. They got a bicycle in here. They have this giant cooler in here. You can store tons and tons of stuff in here. Now some friends of ours, very good friends of ours that we love dearly, own another RV, very, very similar to this model, but it's not this model. I can't really say what it is, but it has this kind of storage compartment in the back. And they pack this thing up with bins of stuff that they need. And their big problem is if, they can't, if it's not here on the outside and accessible from this side or the other side, they have to pretty much unpack the whole back of this thing to be able to get to the stuff that's in the middle. Well, Jayco came up with a great solution to that problem and it's this door right here on the back of the RV. And this creates total access to this entire back compartment because you have three access points and it's really, really just a great, great setup. There's also a receptacle in here. So if you need to plug things in from in here to outside your RV, you can do that. And uh, there's a couple lights in here, as you can see. There's also a cargo net up above for additional storage. I just love this storage space. It's very, very unique and very, very user friendly. Hey, let us know which one of these awesome motorhomes you like the most and why in the comments down below. We would love to read what you think about all these awesome motorhomes. And if you wanna check out some other Class C motorhomes with twin beds, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.